Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you guys how to play Camille. Uh, we're also going to be watching a challenger player. This guy has, uh, has about 1,011 points right now. Uh, currently challenger, has about a 75% win rate while having an outstanding, really amazing stats. So guys, today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to play Camille. I'm going to be watching this guy, see how he carries himself in Challenger. But I'm also going to be explaining a lot of stuff on how Camille works throughout the game. So with that being said, guys, uh, let's roll this game. Alright, so this uh, Camille player in specific, uh, he likes to run Grasp runes. So uh, he takes Grasp with Shield Bash, with Bone Plating, with Revitalize, also with the Magical Footwear, with the Biscuit Delivery, with two points into AD, and then one point into Armor. Personally, uh, this is probably the best rune setup that you can go for right now on uh, Camille. This is pretty much what I run myself as well. It's pretty consistent rune setup. Uh, also works very well for the laney phase. Uh, that's where it shines the most at. Uh, because Grasp, you can proc it like every single time over and over again during the laney phase. Um... It makes it a lot more easy. Also, um, Revitalize is something which completely depends on you. Uh, you can also take Overgrowth instead of Revitalize. Uh, in my opinion, Overgrowth is better, but uh, Revitalize just works as well because, of course, like Camille does healing as well, so uh, it works, you know, very good. Anyways, for the starter item, you can do two things. You can either go Corrupting Potion on Camille or you can take Dorm Blade. Um, if you're playing with Corrupting Potion, then you also gotta like change your rune setup a little bit. Most of the time, if you're playing with this setup, you want to be playing with the Doran Blade as well. Now, as far as the uh, early game of Camille, really depends on what you're going to be playing against. In this case, um, he's currently playing Camille against Renekton. Uh, this matchup is kind of favored into Renekton if played properly, but it's also favored into Camille if she managed to get like pressure early on and she gets a little bit of good trades off. It really depends. Ultimately, it's not the worst matchup for Camille. It's also not the best matchup. It really depends on how the two players are playing it out. Alright, so... Often on Camille, you can play really, really aggressive in the early game, especially level 1, 2, 3, because... Camille has an advantage over every other champion, which is her passive, right? Um, at level 1, most of the time against most champions, you can win level 1 pretty easily because if you take the push, you can have the you can have the passive proccing every like 10-12 seconds. So you will always have to shield up um, if you trade properly. You can tank up a lot of damage level 1 to 3 uh, by just by trading. Make sure you, you always use your passive in a way um, that you actually make good use of it. Now, of course, depending on the matchup that you're going to be playing against, you either want to play very defensive or you want to play very aggressive. In specific matchups like Renekton, you want to try to play as aggressive, especially in the early game, as much as possible. Um, because this matchup could go really bad later on. Around now is the power spike of Camille. Ooh, this is not the best trade ever, but this is going to be a free kill for Camille. Honestly, that was a really good trade by Renekton, but he actually gone way too deep in there. He could have had, like, a very hard win here, but he gone too far. Also, Camille took, one like, like, one tower shot. Anyways, uh, for the build of Camille... Oh. Renekton tries to cancel the backboard. Camille can get another kill very easily right here. Using the Revitalize to heal up a little bit, using the W, and gets another kill on the Renekton. Anyways, um, what you want to build on Camille is always going to be very much the same. Uh, you want to be building a Trinity Force as the first item. You want to be getting a Tiamat as the second item. And then you want to be getting a Death Stance uh, as a third item. You pretty much want to build the same in every game. That's pretty much what the meta is for Camille right now. You don't really ever change the build path. So that's pretty much the, the core build of Camille. Now as far as of the, the skill order of Camille. Uh, you want to be maxing your Q first. Then max your E after. 
and then make sure W is last. Uh, you pretty much want to do this every game, even if you play against ranged champions. Uh, generally, you just want to go for the Q max. Maybe put a few points into E if you um, if you want to use it more often. Uh, but as of recently, like Camille also got nerfed, so her E's got nerfed quite a bit, especially le le level five. It's nerfed really hard. So max and Q is the best thing you can do right now. Now Camille currently has the advantage. Uh, this guy has about one kill right now. He has about one assist. Uh, he's also got two Doran Blades to make the laning phase a lot easier. Um, pretty much the best thing he could do right now is to get a proper freeze. Uh, either on his side of the lane. Or m like making a huge wave to push into the enemy turret. So the best thing right now is to build up the creep wave. Especially because they have a Galio. He has either a choice to push really hard or to like uh, build up the creep wave very, very slowly. By doing that, like he can, he can roam, he can get like kill pressure, he can do a lot. So uh, this is why he's not pushing as hard. He's just trying to like build up the creep wave so he can eventually maybe dive for Necton, uh, maybe go for the all in, maybe the roam, uh, something like that. This is a really good way to get an advantage early on against your opponent because if you're stacking up your waves, uh, that means like if Renekton tries to trade right now, he would have to tank up like two waves of creep, so he can't really do that much. Rek'Sai is about to gank, but he can't really do as much because there's too many creeps, and Needle and Galio are also very uh, also nearby right now. As you guys can see, like the, the, the wave is now completely stacked up on the turret. Nidalee and Galio is coming in. He set up like a perfect wave to dive for Renekton on the turret. So even in a matchup like Renekton, a matchup which is considered to be difficult in certain like certain games, you can make this matchup very, very easy if you um if you manipulate the waves a little bit. This is kind of like the way how you want to play Camille in general. Uh, not just against Renekton, but just, you know, just Camille in general. This is how you want to play. Camille has a pretty strong laney phase. Then again, it really does depend on like what you're playing against. But um, champions like Renekton, you can definitely snowball on champions like, uh, like Renekton. Let's see if he goes back to base. But yeah, guys, uh, this person is probably one of the uh, one of the best Camille players in Challenger right now. He plays Camille pretty consistent. His uh, laning face is very strong. He always knows like uh, exactly like how to manipulate the waves and everything, make it very easy. Uh, from what I know, this guy also likes to uh, TP to bot lane and mid lane and roam a lot. I've definitely been like watching like a lot of games with this guy. In the past already. So he's using his teleport to go back top lane. Just to stop Renekton. He's looking to see if the if he can get the catch on the Annie. Which is currently walking inside the jungle. Gets a really good catch. Really nice. Honestly guys. I can't say how important this is yet. But... Um, Regardless of the lane that you're playing, you gotta get really good at map, map awareness, guys. For instance, right now, he uses teleport. He immediately saw like Annie was gonna go inside his own jungle and takes the kill for that. Uh, it's really important to have like good web awareness to see these kind of things. Currently for his build, he has two Doran Blades to empower his laning phase to make it a little bit stronger while it's not really that expensive to buy either. He's getting the Sheen as one of the first items because this empowers the Q to do a lot more damage. So if you rotate your combos just a little bit, you're going to be doing a lot more damage with your Qs as well. And after Sheen, he tries to get like a page, eventually getting a Trinity Force, then getting like a Tiamat afterwards, and eventually getting a Death Stance. That's pretty much 
what Camille's build is all about. Now, as far as the runes, besides having, you know, the grass build, which is pretty much the matter right now, uh, you also have press the attack setup. But the Grasp is by far the best uh, setup out there at the moment. As far as like the trades, you can always start off a trade against any opponent with your Q. Then waiting just for one second and then using your W and E to like trade. Do like a full on trade while doing max damage. Once again, pretty good setup. They got Renekton down once again. Uh, you might think that this is just because the junglers are playing really good, but the, the reality is, like, he set up the wave in a very good way, so um, so that the jungler can come in and actually get the kill. If Camille did not set up the lane properly for ganks, then it would have been really, really difficult for the junglers and the mid laner to actually gank top. But it probably get no kills at all. But yeah guys, this is pretty much how you want to play Camille in the laning phase. He already has the Trinity Force at about 11 minutes in the game. Currently does not have teleport though. Uh, but top lane is currently being pushed out all the way. He can just go bot lane right now and uh, make a play there. There isn't really much to do in the map right now. Also, Renekton is bot lane too, so... Like, around this time in the game, where the laning phase is done, all it takes right now is to make one good roam around the map. Uh, possibly even split pushing around the dragon, because the dragons... Uh, they'll be back up soon. Gets another catch on Renekton. If there's like, if if the wave is completely pushed in in top lane, you always want to walk down bot lane or mid lane trying to get a catch on Camille. It's pretty easy to get a catch on Camille because you can engage with your E and pop your ultimate. Instead of st st uh, staying in bot lane, uh, this Camille player decides to go mid lane, even trying to get the kill on Annie, but it failed because she saw it. There's another teleport coming from bot lane. Camille is moving in again, guys. Constantly pressuring the map. Not just staying top lane and farming out, but this guy um, is constantly roaming around the map, trying to apply pressure. Gets another catch. Yumi's also here, so that's two kills for them. Meanwhile, Rennington is top lane farming out while this guy is bot lane trying to uh, get multiple caches. Already standing 5 0, guys. It really doesn't matter if Rennington is farming top lane right now. Even if he gets playdings, it really doesn't matter. Rennington is not going to outscale like Camille. Um, besides that, he's done way more than Rennington right now. Getting multiple kills as well as getting the turret is way more worth it than getting uh, or saving platings. The dragon will spawn within a couple minutes. Um, he could go top lane right now. And as soon as the dragon gets alive, he could just TP to the dragon and then start the next upcoming team fight. So literally the only thing he's got to do right now is to split top lane. Once his teleport comes up, he teleports, hopefully forcing Rannington to stay top lane, wins the next team fight, and then that should be it. Rek'Sai is currently getting caught inside the jungle of the team. He could go both mid and top, but he prefers to go top to, to farm out little things. So right now, his teleport, everything is up, right? So it doesn't matter what he does right now, whether he goes farming the the waves uh, or farming the jungle camps, applying pressure on top. Um, he can join the team at any time he wants right now. 
So the best thing would be to force Rennington to farm while he can split around the map. Gets another catch on the any. Once again, Rennington farming top lane while this guy uh, pushed down the wave and then roamed afterwards. He could probably get a kill on Kai'Sa too, uh, only if he gets his abilities back up. But yeah guys, this is pretty much like how it looks like when Camille is being played to perfection. This is like the kind of playstyle that you want to have if you're playing Camille. The game, it's been completely carried by Camille this game. Uh, this was definitely like, the whole game was being played by Camille. Anyways guys, uh, hopefully this video has been able to help you guys out. It was a very short, fast, super carry game by Camille. Uh, if you guys actually want to see a challenge games from me, uh, do not forget to check out my stream guys. I'm streaming like six times a week. So uh, yeah, once again, if you guys want to see like challenge games from me, don't forget to check that out, uh, check that out guys. Uh, but anyways, with that being said, thank you for watching today's YouTube video, and I will catch you guys up next time. Peace.